design and modeling of TRC elements. He is also a member of BIS working group for textile reinforcement and review of IS 16481. So with this brief introduction, I welcome our guest. Thank you, sir. I am privileged to invite our chief guest, Mr. Sachin Paul, sir, to share his expertise on mechanical and durability characterization of TRC.
practice of molding of concrete that is used in industry or used in construction, and that is the molding of concrete that is consumed in our in our world. We produce as a construction engineer or as a city engineer, as a concrete technician, we produce some of the highest amount of carbon emissions to the environment, or in the So this is a big challenge for us to give the future generation a world which is much cleaner and much sustainable. So that is why all the research around the world is focusing on sustainability. Let's just go through it brief. I hope you can see it's kind of blurred. So there are three pillars of sustainability: the environment, social, and economic. These are the fundamentals of sustainable construction or sustainability in any aspect. The environment part deals with global warming, water shortage, energy consumption, raw materials. So global warming reduces carbon footprint, reduces carbon dioxide emission, and make it more sustainable. Water shortage. We use a lot of water for concrete production and and and, and curing, right? We need water for concrete manufacturing or mixing. We also need a lot of water for curing. What can be done to make it reduce the water that is required for concrete? So there are a lot of curing compounds and so there is why one which is focused on that area. Energy consumption. We need to find extremely high consumption because of raw materials. One of the biggest challenges that we face. You know, because some background construction, you don't get proper river sanitary skills. After the equipment and manufacturers. And there's a lot of surgery of good quality uh, rocks, grass, or what you call the food spray. So the material that is available for us is very finite. Within the next 20, 10, 20 years, there will not be any natural materials or probably there will not be there will not be any natural materials. So it's a big concern for us to minimize water resources and get it. So the requirement of what we need is how long the world your heart comes and you need to need a lot of housing facilities and it is very important for us to have a lot of housing facilities which are our proper standards. Aging infrastructure, this is one of the biggest challenges in India because Aging construction is a very long one. We have only started a boom of construction last 20 30 years. That means that the time for repair of these materials are based. Down the line of the years, the biggest challenge for all of us will be to have the repair of success that we have. Nowadays, if you have a house inspected within 5 to 10 years, it's covered in all of them. So the durability in both sectors is very important. Polluted in space, you may you do not need uh, the thing seeing uh, moving system or polluted area. Economic, economic criteria, give it a real estate, there is no maximum level, maintenance cost is very high, and high transportation cost. We have a very compliance to consumption, so you have a very high requirement of transportation cost for all quality and finished products. So, then, that we look forward in sustainability. Efficient and economic transition, low carbon emission, durability, durable structure, new uh, and recycle, which is very common in these days. We are opting for design facilities and recycling will post it in binary so that's a big boom. And sustainability based design. These are the fundamental concepts that drives and serve all of the so these are the fundamental ideas that you should always do for when you do process. It doesn't matter what you do in process. Okay. The dynamic level of the fundamental process should be based on one of these senses. And that is very important for the future development of the right. Let's see what is sector in first point. I think uh Professor Sula have a phrase on what is sector in first point. Uh, Revise memory and just go to some days without external people's body. External people's body is basically a fine body that is embedded in a non corrosive movement. That means that you have a mesh, a two dimensional non corrosive movement, could be made up of a glass, a carbon, or any possible material. But they should be non corrosive. And generally, there are only a three nothing or two dimensions there to access all dimensions. Right? And 
can't they can be embedded in that fine matrix? Why do you need a fine matrix? Because your complex system will be very small. Okay, and for proper penetration through this size, generally the content that is used for textile because content will have a part, maximum particle size of 0.62 to 11. So you want to generally find a which is more than 2 or not for textile vehicles content. So this is what is textile vehicles content. You have a non-corrosive 2 times slug grid, not a closed grid, a grid open grid, which is embedded in a fine grid concrete matrix. Now what is that matrix? Since it's non-corrosive, there is no corrosion effect. That means you have very high durability for this materials. So it, it lasts for a very long time, irrespective of what is the exposure condition. For example, you imagine you are constructing something in a marine environment. Right? You have steel inside these materials and it starts to deteriorate very fast because of the corrosion effects of chlorides in marine environment. So these are some of the biggest disadvantages of the reinforced concrete construction that you have a high possibility of having corrosion in the system. Material optimization. You have to do it in very thin sections with external reinforced concrete. This is basically because for a conventional concrete, reinforced concrete, you need cover. Right? What is the purpose of the cover? The cover actually protects your concrete. See. Okay. The cover is for the protection of your steel, says that the external agents does not reach the steel, especially water and the moisture and oxygen. They don't reach the steel and start corrosion. Since these are non-corrosive reinforcement, they actually don't need such steel or such materials or such cover. So therefore, you can have very really thin sections. High design freedom, we will see what is high design freedom. We have a lot of flexibility in the design regarding how the ERC can be made. Target orientation, and this is very important. So I hope Sunitana has started with fiber reinforced concrete. In fiber reinforced concrete, you have randomly oriented fibers. Right? So if you have a stress in a particular axis, the fibers that is only aligned in that axis can contribute to the resistance towards that stress, especially tensile stresses. But in case of extra reinforced concrete, you have a target reinforcement. That means that you can align your reinforcement in the direction of the stress acting on the system and this allows the very high efficiency in comparison to fiber So these are the major advantages of what happens with the ERC but we will see with some of the examples how they work out. Design freedom. So these are some of the constructions that you made for the ERC. The advantage is that you have a very flexible system. Your reinforcement is a mesh which is actually flexible. So it is only up to your imagination how the shape should exist. If you want a curve, you can make a curve. If you want a very stiff material, you can also have a very stiff material. It all depends upon what you want out of the system. Okay. So design freedom is very important. This is not possible with steel reinforcement. Why? Steel is a very rigid material. You can't bend steel like this. Or you can't have a flexible system like steel, like the awesome. So sometimes you can have a very stiff concrete in a uh, flexible textile and you can keep over an uh, inclined plane and it will take the shape of the plane. So it is a very, very flexible and very creative. The second part is surface finish. You have very fine concrete metrics. That means the surface will be very good. Sometimes in our lab we have produced something called a mirror finish, not without, not by grinding or anything, just by having a proper uh, mold, then you get a very, very smooth finish. So the surface finish is very good. Therefore, this is an example of a client in textile reinforced concrete. And you can see me standing here, that is from the University of Aachen in Germany. They were the first to make the textile reinforced concrete clients or cladding panels. So they are external clients for the Institute of Technical Textile Reinforced Concrete in Germany. Okay. So they are very beautiful, they are very durable still now. It's been like uh, 12 years of construction, still now they look very nice. Some of the other aspects of textile reinforced concrete, what you are seeing, is the durability aspects of it. So the first one, the first figure that you see there, this is actually a uh, 
group system that is made out of PRC. So the first group system that is made out of PRC it was in Germany 2006, 7, 5, 9. And the second system is, the second figure is a ring. This was for our water treatment unit that we designed. So we made a 1.5 meter ring with just a thickness of 25 centimeters. Or 25 mm, not centimeters, 25 mm. The thickness was just 25 mm or 2.5 centimeters. So that was the design that we made uh, for the treatment unit. Normally, if you use a conventional steel reinforcement, you will go for uh, 70 mm or 100 mm or 120 mm thickness. So that is the amount of volume of material you are optimizing in case of external reinforcement. Oil tool components, they, they have thin section, they are high durability, CO2 reduction in material, uh, also for transportation because the weight is less, saves about 70% of CO2 emission capacity in normal construction. They are very lightweight, they produce very lightweight patterns. Some of the statuses say that the requirement of cement in comparison to the conventional construction is around 30% for uh, TRC in comparison to 100% for steel. That means there is a pressure of 70% or the saving of 70% of material for the construction. For example, in the previous case is an example for it. You need a 10 mm of slab or 10 mm of ring for a normal construction. We have reduced that to 25 mm. So you have 75 percent approximately 75 mm, 75 percent retention to 40. So these are some of the aspects of the also that is very important and that comes or makes it more sustainable, more interesting and more approachable for the future construction. If you look at the economic aspects, any emerging material will have challenges in competing with the market strategies. Again, the RC have the same thing. If you consider the cost per unit volume, then the RC may not be, uh, or will have challenges in competing with the conventional reinforcement at this state of time. But it will evolve in future and it can become uh, changed to a lot of sustainable economic solutions. Now, the biggest fact you should consider is the cost per time or cost per durability aspect of the material. What can the lifespan of the material with the TRC in comparison to a normal reinforced concrete material? A TRC which does not degrade can have hundreds or 200 years lifespan if not more because there is no deterioration or degradation mechanism in the system. But if you go for a conventional steel reinforcement system, your lifespan is very limited depending upon how you design. So, what is the lifespan that is given by the element also comes under the consideration of the economic aspect of the system. Okay? Uh, there is, these are lightweight system, so you can carry them easily, so they can have more material left for the load of the system, and there is a lot of material optimization and a lot of economic aspects can be achieved by those considerations. So these are some of the major works around the world and some of the important works in India. The first one is the first bridge that is made up of textile reinforced concrete that was in Germany. The second one is a roofing system which is actually for the parking area in again RWTH Arkham where I have worked for some time. The third is St. Robert, it is a uh, sanitary units by Rain Industries which is one of the textile reinforced concrete manufacturers in India. Very good. There is only one company that manufactures textile reinforced concrete in India and they have fabricated this same sanitary units as a part of switch wire project. This is a facade, a very beautiful facade that is made out of textile reinforced concrete which has openings in it and they are structural stability of this facade is very interesting. The design also is very interesting. This is a column retrofitting that we have done at IIT Madras. Uh, this is made again with the textile reinforced concrete. It was jacketing to enhance the strength of a uh, 70 year old building. And these are some of the water tanks that we have made in IIT Madras. It's a part of a research project. Let's start with the concept of textile reinforced concrete. What is textile reinforced concrete? And if I exceed time, please let me know. So, textile reinforced concrete is basically a state hardness cementitious material. So, you have two materials inside. One is a reinforcement, right, and not corrosive reinforcement. 
The other one is a concrete matrix. Now, there is a lot of complicated mechanism that goes inside these two materials. It's unlike C, which is very straightforward in comparison to uh, a complex system or complex composite like this. Now, what are the complexities? First, the mechanism is not linear. The tensile behavior of the material is not linear. You have three parts of behavior. So, if you take a tensile element, or if you take a linear element and you, you tension it or you put it from both the sides, right? that's called the tension test. From the tension test, you get a spread curve. So, if you look at the spread spread curve, there are three parts to the curve. First part, is actually dominated by the matrix. So whatever the properties of the first part will be the mechanism of the matrix. That means that the material will not be cracked in this first part, it will be linear behavior. The first crack only happens when a section of the concrete reaches its capacity, tensile capacity. Once it cracks, then another section of the element reaches the ultimate capacity and the crack properties. So there are multiple cracks that is formed at different sections. Once these multiple cracks are formed, that forms almost a constant stress state. So the second state of your graph is almost a horizontal line. The first stage is a linear line at the first crack, and then there is a horizontal line that indicates there is no progression of stress with multiple cracks. Once crack saturation is reached, that means that the energy required to make another crack or form another crack is more than the energy required to spread or expand or pull the fibers apart, then the material starts into a strain hardening region. So this is a strain hardening region. This strain hardening region is what gives the tensile behavior or tensile strength for tensile because concrete. So the crack widens and it strain hardens and reaches the value and then it breaks. Now, interestingly, you can see a diagram here. Do you know what this is? What is it? It is actually called as a physically image correlation diagram. So DIC. Okay. So DIC is a device by which you can find the stresses in an element by a visual observation. So you there's a camera, so it holds the displacement and the camera gives you the strain profile of a section. Right? So DIC can be used to get the strain distribution in a system, it can be used to find the displacement of a system, it can be used for a lot of other applications like strain controlling and other things. So basically it gives you a strain profile. So here you can see the horizontal lines, they are cracks. Okay. So there are multiple cracks formed in a system, right? Now the question is, this is a system which forms cracks. Is it good for construction? How can you use a system which has a lot of cracks and for construction? For example, water tank. You saw a water tank is made of PRC, PRC, right? How can you use such a system? There is cracks. You don't want cracks in water tank, right? What happens if there is a crack? There is leakage. So the thing is that it doesn't matter where you have a crack. What matters is whether the crack width is big enough to produce a seepage. Right. So since you have a distributed reinforcement, the biggest advantage of PRC and its predecessor is a fellow cement is that you have a lot of distributed crack formation. Or you have total crack in for conventional reinforcement if you have X crack. Instead of X you have A2 X A user cracks. So of one there will be 20 cracks. So the entire crack width is distributed along this 20 cracks. And that distributed crack produces very, very small crack openings where through which there is no seepage happens in the system. Right? So distribution of crack is the one of the biggest advantages of PRC. Thereby we reduce the crack width at a particular location. We are distributing in a system. It's a very similar concept of erosion and pursuit. That is, the factor is maybe knowing what is the mechanism of erosion. So, erosion is very similar. Do you know erosion? What is erosion? Erosion is one in which you have chicken mesh or what you call it, small grids, in which steel grids by which to make them. So, this is the mechanism. Right. So, I think that if I explain too much of the mechanism, you will start seeing. 
So let's skip mechanism very fast. So this, what can we use as reinforcement? That's also a big question. And can we use everything for reinforcement? Can we put some boulders and try to find as well? Sign the mechanism. You get a lot of grids. Have you seen in market you get green grids? Which looks like textiles. Have you seen them? Some of you who actually have seen something in market would have seen. These grids are polymeric grids. Can they be used? Now the biggest question is, the biggest uh, thing that you should consider is they can't be used. All of the consumer materials can't be used as grids. So the question is what can be used? Materials that have a high modulus can should be used for strain hardening response. That means that materials like carbon, glass, produces a response like this where you have high strength from the first track load. The first track load is around 4 and your ultimate strength is around 12. So the strain handling response is only obtained by high modulus material. If you have low modulus materials like polypropylene, PE, then what happens is that you have a horizontal depression of the horizontal extent of the curve where you produce a lot of deformation but there will not be the strain hardening response. So, import aspect of the construction or import aspect of PRC, you need a material which has high modulus. Options are carbon, glass, and very few polymers are high modulus. One of the examples is aramidifiers. They can be also basal, which is actually uh, having a lot of durability issues, but still basal can be also used. So, these are the options of reinforcement. The general mechanism, I am not going to the mechanism again. Uh, so, the mechanism basically with different reinforcements. So what we try to find here is we try to find out what is the change in behavior with one layer, three layer, four layers, five layers of textile. Fine. With a small reinforcement ratio, there is no strain hardening response at all. You actually get a strain softening response. So, there is a minimum reinforcement for getting a strain hardening response or a response which produces a higher tensile strength. Okay, and we have to come up with the band for the particular the minimum reinforcement ratio for a design purpose. The second thing that we observe is generally as the reinforcement ratio increases, there are three couple of things that happens. As the number of layers of reinforcement ratio increases, the number of tracks also increase. Okay, and the strain reduces. You can see the slope actually reduces, increases. That means the strain value of the particular slope reduces. Okay. That means that you have smaller, smaller cracks or the crack grid reduces with higher reinforcement ratio. So that is the biggest advantage. We are trying to reduce the crack. So have higher, have higher reinforcement ratio helps to reduce the crack grid and crack boundary. Okay. So that is one of the biggest aspects. Technically there are other aspects to this curve. Uh, we need, there is a transition from a trilinear curve that we have discussed earlier to a bilinear curve. So high, high reinforcement ratio, there is a, a mechanism happening in the material which results in the transition from a triangle to a bilinear. Now the complexities of textile reinforcement. One of the biggest complexities that you have is that a single yarn of your textile is actually made up of hundreds and thousands of individual fibers. Okay? So these individual fibers are compiling of a single yarn, as you can see in a figure. So the imagine a material that is made up of hundreds and thousands of individual fibers. When you embed such a material in concrete, only the outer surface of the material or outer fibers of this yarns are in contact with the concrete. The remaining inner yarns are actually not connected to the concrete. What it produces is a differential displacement. So you can see when the stress is applied upon the system, the outer fibers take the load and they get pulled out and they fail first and then gradually the, the failure of the inner fibers will proceed. So this is what is shown in the telescopic pull out. So then you actually see the outer fibers failing first and then it will progressively goes to inner fibers. So that is a mechanism which makes very big complications in the external impulse problem because the amount of sea fibers or amount of outer fibers that interact with the stress transfer mechanism is what 
dictates the mechanism of what predicts the ultimate mechanism of the composite. So there are a lot of complex aspects of textile because concrete because of its complex construction. Now some of our research, so we further research on this and what we generally found is that the efficiency of coatings, so there are two types of coating, there is one coating which is effectively covered, you can see there is no gap between, and there is a coating where there are a lot of gaps in between. So the efficiency or the performance of these two fibers are entirely different. You can see that the performance has a higher index value for the well coated fibers, whereas the, for a mediocre coating or for a surface coated material, your index value is very less. So the coating material also contributes to a lot of performance of these fibers. So this also adds to complexity of textile because concrete. It is not that it's just the interaction between the fiber and the concrete. The coating, how well it is coated, what kind of material you are using for the coating. For example, epoxy. You know, epoxy, epoxy is an article, what you call this. So epoxy have very rigid materials which actually produces very high efficiency for a coating, whereas there are other materials like SPR or acrylic coatings which actually produce very low efficiency. So the material of coating, the intensity of the depth of coating and the uniformity of coating also influence the ultimate performance of this material. We also these are the very small parts of research that we have done. We only put a lot of small parts of the mechanical characteristics. So what happens when you have additional additives to the materials? When you have fibers, so these two graphs indicates what happens when you have fibers. So this is a DRC without fiber and this is a DRC with short glass fibers, 6 mm in dimension. What happens is that you have a higher first crack rate. So what happens is that when you have a tensile stress acting on the element, you have crack propagating from base to the crack at different locations. They propagate and they uh, they collect, they combine and form a true crack. Right? When you have more fibers on the system, what happens is that the fibers actually restrain the propagation of these cracks. Thereby, you get a higher first crack. Okay. So if you want a DRC design, you want to design a DRC system which actually produces a higher first crack load then one of the options instead of increasing the volume factor, one of the options we can do is we incorporate fibers. Okay? The ultimate value will not change, your ultimate load will be almost the same, but you get a higher first value. So that is how it can work. So there are a lot of um, things that you can do in design which can help you to see what you are looking for in a DRC design element. The second one is element of geometry. When you have very close elements, when you have very close fibers or textiles, then generally what we find is that at higher reinforcement ratios, we get a higher first crack load. This is again the same mechanism. In the vicinity of the crack propagating, there are more fibers or more yarns to harass this fibers or harass these cracks. Therefore, for a closed system, for a very, very close grid system, you generally see very high first crack load in comparison to Now, can we use any material for construction or for PRC? No. Even if it is glass, there are different types of glass. What glass can we use? So we did an extensive study. One of the, one of the major parts of my work is uh, durability of textile universe concrete, especially looking at what are the possibilities of replacing a conventional AR glass with E glass. Now we have three projects in continuation of that. One is with Dr. Sunita B, who you have heard earlier. I think. Ma'am, we have started with the newer printed glasses. So we have a project funded uh, uh, by the CRP, which is looking at the durability of the glass textiles. Right. So there are different types of glass. What generally happens to glass in alkaline environment? So glass degrades in alkaline environment. What is the pH of concrete? Do you know what is the pH of concrete? Approximately. Get up from your seat. What is the base of concrete? Approximately. Is it alkaline, acidic, or neutral? Concrete is acidic, alkaline, or neutral? Alkaline, for sure. Right? Yeah. So, concrete pH is around 30. Right? Around approximately, you can say. 
say is a 12 point, 8 to 13 point. Is that the range of PS depending upon what is the OPC and the PPC, what the cement you are using? Depends on what is the basic comfort of the cement. Now, in an aluminum medium, a normal glass, which is generally called E glass, decrease because the process is called as hydrolysis. So you always find my ions are from the aluminum medium, attacks the glass and releases SI. Right. Therefore, you actually form cavitations or degradations in the system. Right. So this is very important, very, very, very significant. So we did some tests. So this is AR glass, this is E glass. Now I should explain what is AR glass. AR glass is a glass with zirconium content. A zirconium is a compound that helps in preventing the degradation of glass. Okay. So zirconium glass and zirconium prevents the degradation. So you can see the zirconium ion glass does not produce any degradation, whereas with E glasses you can see the strength of degrades about under different exposure. So it is very important for you to, if you are using for your research or for your application, if you are using a textile reinforced concrete glass fibers, to understand what is the nature of glass that you are using for your work, either constraint or research. Now why E glasses? Why should we look at E glasses? Why I said that there are three projects with us with E glasses? What is the proper reason for E glasses? The main reason is the cost difference. AR glasses are not manufactured in India, whereas E glasses are manufactured in India. So if you get an AR glass, the minimum cost you have to deal is 320 euros per roll of AR glass. In comparison to that, you have 50 euros for your E, uh, your e class. So there is about 6 times the cost difference. And this is a big difference considering an economy like India. Because we need a sustainable cost effective material for construction in comparison to a lot of other foreign countries. For us, we need a robust task in construction material which is sustainable and also cost effective. So cost is a big aspect for our price. The second is that there is no production of AR glass in India, so you have to import them, you have to pay for this material, and you have to uh, give import taxes and other additional amounts in comparison to this. The last part is going to glass textiles in market for concrete application without any condition. So there is a lot of E glass elements, which are called as AR glass for construction of they claim to be AR glass and they are available in the market. One of such examples is this. Right? So if you go to market for again for your research work or for construction, you get a lot of AR glass materials or people manufacturers say that they are AR glass materials or coated AR glass materials, but the problem with these materials are these materials are not proper AR glass. So this we, we did test for two materials. One is actually imported from US, which is having actual zirconia, can have the zirconia content to be 14.4A, whereas the normal AR glass, normal AR glass that we use manufactured in India, that they say that they are AR coated, which has a zirconia content of one. So there's a huge difference in marketed AR glass and actual AR glass that is available in the market. If you look at the comparative study, what is the difference between them is that the manufactured AR glass, the AR glass that says that they are not AR glass, which has a very low zirconia content, is available to the market. Loss is compared to straight hardening behavior completely after an accelerated aging. So there is an accelerated aging mechanism for exposure uh, to a higher temperature in water, hot water bath. You accelerate them and then find the tensile strength after the physical tensile strength. So you can see that after exposure, this is the initial state, and after exposure, it has completely lost the strain hardening behavior. So there are a lot of materials available in the market which they claim to be AR glass, which are not AR glass, but distorted with very small and of silicone, which is not for effect. So it is a big challenge for somebody who is actually working in the industry or for research to get a correct product for your work. Right. So durability is a very important thing and how to check the durability of a material is also very important. So the test procedures are very important considering the test of first concrete, especially in the preliminary stage of research. We also did a lot of numerical analysis for the uh, test of first concrete. So this is an uh, integral model that we did in China. 
so this was based on a constant model. The model that uh, XT the concrete element and then the reinforcement and we attach uh, the link that two elements with a constant model from our pull out test. And this model was able to predict a lot of behaviors uh, with a reasonable accuracy, which also gave a higher power solution after analysis. So this is something which is also complicated. We need a lot of test data to come up with such models. So I'll give a go with some examples or uh, some examples of work that we have done in our uh, lab and in uh, related with the test of equals concrete. One of the work was the property of a column in IIT Madras, that is a uh, SAC building, student faculty building. There was a column which was almost integrated, there's a lot of reinforcement uh, dropping and the strength of the materials were very best. So 230 by 450 was the diameter of the column. There was loose concrete, there was reinforcement projecting out, there was uh, cracks covered all throughout this column. Right. So the challenge for us was to design a TRC texture that was the reinforcement section and to execute the texture that was concrete retrofitting method in this column. So first preliminary was investigation of the strength parameters during the week. It was supposed to have M25 strength. Uh, it was great M25. The column first had an average strength of 18 MPA and the second one had another little bit 24 MPA. Uh, even though the design strength should be much more. We also did uh, reinforcement and detailing. The Oxford cost was 16 numbers of 25 mm cost and ties were 8 mm. But a lot of the work were over and they had a lot of cracks in between and there was a lot of spotting in between. So we designed a system for this. We designed that uh, three, three layers of a particular textile which from the suspend curve of the testing. We proved that this is good enough for having a particular load capacity and we tried to implement that in the field. So this was how we did it. We up in the surface. We had the first layer of uh, mesh or the glass. This was AR glass, AR glass fiber meshes and you can see ties. These are the ties that generally used for construction of electrical wires. Right. So the ties are generally used to connect from one element to right. So this was how we jacketed it. And again, there was that overlapping length. Okay, I have to go back. Okay. So, yeah, there is the overlapping length. So this overlapping length 150 was obtained from a pull out test. So we did uh, different lamp lengths for this textile. We did, we did 100 to 150. Uh, 50 lamp lengths and we tried to pull the material apart and we looked at what is the lamp length that is required for continuous overlap uh, transfer flow. And this was obtained as for this material, it was obtained as 150 was good enough. So, from that design and aspect, we conserved the design of this element. Then the second coat was done, second reinforcement, the third layer, and this was the final, final coat that we came. Another project that we had was with, uh, say, with uh, the IGSTC or Indo German Collaborative Research Center. So there we collaborated, we had four partners, two industry partners and two, two research partners or two academic partners. The industry partners from Indian side was Raina Industries and Majiko was the industry partner from German side. We asked either IIT partners for one of the partners from Indian side as academic partner. We also had CSIR, SCRC as a partner. The second partner from Germany was RWT Schaffen, the University of in Germany. So we had a project, this is part of switch wire the game. This was to make a sewage treatment unit for a urban and very urban system. So this sewage treatment unit was supposed to be a modular sewage treatment unit with textile reinforcement of concrete such that there is no corrosion happening because of steel. The sewage treatment unit, the biggest problem is the corrosion that happens in the steel and we want to replace that. Also, the material should be very lightweight such that we could transfer them as modular units and fabricate them to the side. 
So this was one of the biggest challenges that we had. And this, the second stage of this project was to make thousands of units and distribute it in the different parts of India as this part of the project. So we did a uh, fact and modeling of the elements and then come up with a number of layers and the thickness required to withstand the pressure and overburden on the soil for different conditions. And we fabricated uh, different methods of fabrication in our case. Uh, first method was to actually uh, build up section, that means that we had a frame and we built up from the frame and this is what we did. And this was the final element that we made. So this was the final tank that we that was initial. This is a prototype of the tank. Now we have actually fabricated 12 of such tanks and executed the field. Or next week it will be executed the field for uh, our hosting unit at IIT Madras. Right. So the new tanks are of bigger diameter. They are 2.6 meter diameter and they are actually 1.5 meter high, which is very huge tanks to be made of the RC and the thickness is 25 mm. That means that they are very thin elements. Right. So that is what we are trying to achieve to optimize these materials to its maximum potential is that the material usage is minimum, the, the, the loss of uh, material is minimum. The, the different, these are different other units. This was for what for Saint we made a uh, uh, 6 meter forward panel for Saint Kobek uh, and also 3 meter forward panel for Saint Kobek based on their requirement of strength. So they wanted to hang materials, hang like uh, objects to the wall. So they need a semi special board that can hold some capacity. Right? So we, we took the challenge and we designed a text of the wall panel for them and that was done. Uh, this was a testing of those elements. Uh, so this was a one-way slab and this is a two-way slab. We tested the no, unit. And this is from Germany. So we the, the space, how do you keep two layers of reinforcement apart? Because they are flexible reinforcement, they can stand in between. So when there are two approaches, one is to stress them from one side to the other, which is very difficult from the outside elements. The other and more easier element of object method is that you give space of the middle. So you have spaces something like this, what you see in a PISA spacer, it's very similar to that. So we have spaces all over the wall to distribute the reinforcement. So this is a flooring system that they did at Aachen, at German, in German. Yeah. So this is a very interesting thing that we did. Uh, yeah. So we actually made a flexible, a bendable mold. So we made the textile inverse concrete flat with a bendable mold and once they are at least a semi-plastic state we bend them and make a U out of it or U shape out of it so this is the initial state the horizontal element you pour uh, your self-compact element again the concrete is self-compact so this is a compact and concrete on it and once it starts to set and not harder it starts to have a semi-solid shape you bend it and make a shape of the bench so this was the final bench that we made uh, Brightness is a very best, so I don't know you can see it. So this was the final mess that we made out of it. We also made a bigger element with this. So this was a stormwater drain. So it was a cut soil stormwater drain. If you go to IAT, you can see that there is a lot of such stormwater drains uh, in IAT all the world. So this was 3 meter in diameter in length and we made again a horizontal panel and we, sh we shifted or we, we tilted the edges of this panel such that it makes a double solid state. And there are a lot of complications to this. The time in which you shift, the coefficient of your reinforcement parts of your concrete, addition of fibers, a lot of aspects will influence the behavior and a lot of calculations should go into this before you execute it. So this is also a very interesting thing that you can do as a part of your media and method projects for uh, flexible uh, mold system. So this is yet another concept. This is what this is what we do. So we are trying, we are trying to do different things with textile inverse concrete. So what we did here is that instead of making a box completely with textile inverse concrete, we made a four-sided panel with textile in between. And once this four-sided panel were done, what we did is we took something like this, right? So we inserted fiber 
reinforced uh, glass fiber reinforced uh, reinforcements at the corner and then the uh, concrete. So this is how we can make a box with a flexible reinforcement. You don't have to actually manufacture it completely as a box. You can have the flat element, then uh, use a flexibility of your textile, use the flexibility of the needs of your textile and then convert that into a keyboard or a box shape. We also navigated some kind of a lot of 3D uh, textiles. So 3D textiles is a textile that spans both the both, both horizontal axis and also vertical axis. The advantage of 3D fabrics is that you don't have to have spacing between two layers. If you need two layers of reinforcement, just put a 3D fabric there, it forms a reinforcement. You have to just pour the concrete over it. Right. So 3D fabrics are very interesting and some of the you know, new innovations in uh, the awesome is happening in 3D fabrication. Now this is a 3D fabric that we made in our campus. So you can see a grid of rectangle or square slab and a circle slab made for 3D fabric. So you don't have to space the spacing of the flexible material is very difficult. So you can do that by just keeping the reinforcement. So we did uh, 3D fabrication, we poured concrete, just keep it in the mold, pour concrete over it, and then you get a final product of Okay. So I think that is that concludes most of the work uh, that I was uh, planning to present here. So the basic conclusion, sustainable design of the ASCII structures should be based on mechanical, economic, economic co-friendly and durability parameters. Understanding of mechanical characterization is very important for the design and this is very, very pivotal in consideration of textile members only. The fundamental behavior of these materials in tension is very important or should be understood in what most importance most importance to uh, design for such a The efficiency factor or the performance of this material depends on the coating material, the uniformity of, of the coating and the oxidation of the reinforcement. Proper testing of durability is also very important for the performance of these materials in long term. So thank you. These are two groups I work with. This is Professor Gatu's group, this is Professor Gatu, who is mine, and Professor Sundas Gate. This is Professor Raul Sabino, I was a professor from uh, Argentina, and this is Professor Gatu's wife, and this is our group for the ASCII IIT Madras presently, and this is our group at uh, Aachen and Germany. Uh, we did a lot of work on durability of textile interest concrete in Germany, and this was our partners. Okay, so thank you. If you have any question, then you can ask. This joint, what are the joints? This joint, what are the joints? What are the joints? Inside you can take us. Outside, if the joint is... Generally, what happens is that you can get a crack at the outside because it's a tension. The thing that you have got to consider is the state of your concrete. The state of the concrete is hard and too much, then you will crack definitely. So it should be in a plastic case that it does not develop a crack, but it does not flow Because it can also flow. When you do pop it, it clear, it can flow right? So definitely the one of the For the flow break is also a little bit controlled, also the crank is a little bit arrested. So small amount of fibers always helping it, but still the critical aspect is the fluidity of your mix and the state of your painting. So the time from the additional bottle to the point of painting is a question of how you uh, how to flow it your mix at that point. Thank you for this sir. Any other questions? Be free to ask if you have the doubts. Make it as an interaction section such that I can explain something. I know you are five years and every experience you may not understand the entirety of the design and the concepts of it. But anyways, ask, interact if you want to do some projects in this or something, you can interact. I am willing, I am very happy to help you.
Sir, you have shown uh, many government places for TRC, like uh, widely placed most of So, which one is the uh, best one for more? It depends on what is your requirement. So, if you want a very, very high first track load, then a close bit tells you in raising the first track load for higher reinforcement ratio. For some things, it also depends on what is the aggregate that you are using. If you are using some aggregates like Popers and Try, then you can go for grid size of 5 or 4 or 6 and 9 because your aggregates will be stuck in between the reinforcement. So the aggregate size that you use also defines a lot of parameters regarding what is your grid size. Also, what is the final strain response that you want to get out of? Again, close grid, you get a higher perspective.
last quarter period since we are doing my analysis. So, uh, okay. I have to work on answers, so I am not the person to give you a feedback on the answers and diagram. But diagram is basically for uh, spectral design. So, there is a lot of models for thermal analysis, for uh, stress strain response, for everything. In concrete, there is much more flexibility in modeling for concrete, especially for concrete and material side. Okay. And since you have a wide spectrum of things, you have any number of things, so you have to find out what is the best suited thing for your solution. So that is the difference between these two in comparison. Time is more specific to your spectral needs, and also a very specific set of things are there for your material aspects. I, I think that's the only knowledge I have. It's a possible, what's the cost of the diagram? Uh, the interview for my so I <laughs> I like this not open. You can get correct versions. I don't know correct to say in front of the camera that you can get the correct version. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's very expensive. Any other questions? Students, ask something.
pagi hari Amin Nura Amin Nura Boda Hei, aku saya ada orang ni kisah lagi Inna wonder tu pun hilang Nura deh
professor to introduce about the chief guest.
the outset, I would like to thank the organizers of the program, the principal, management and the college for having given me a nice opportunity to stand before you to talk about uh, research and applications on the textile reinforced concrete. I hope you, from the morning onwards you might have been exposed to what is the textile reinforced concrete and why we have to do a research on this one and what are the main features about it and what about the overview on this uh, uh, special concrete, that is textile reinforced concrete and what are the researches carried out in, in and around uh, India, right? So like that, uh, some of the experts in the morning might have been exposed to you, right? So I hope now you all know. So what is the like, uh, textile reinforced concrete, right? Right or wrong? See, it should be a two-way uh, reflection, right? See, otherwise uh, I may get bored and you will all be sleepy also, right? So then and then I will ask some questions relevant to this so that uh, you can just be a communicator. So that will be a good thing, okay? See, as far as uh, the, this kind of workshops are concerned, see, why it is frequently happening? See, in the earlier period, what we are all in the school, uh, your stage, right? We hadn't had this kind of uh, seminars and workshops. So you are all really, really blessed enough. So, if you have a book, you can read it, you can read it, and in the college function, you can read it, seminar, you can read it, you can read it, a speaker, you can read it, you can read it, you can read it. So, you can read it, you can read it, you can read it, you can read it, you can read it. But, this is not the case today. Right? See, you are all exposed to novel ideas and whatever be the things happening in and around the world, right? That is available in your hands. And similarly, so many researchers and experts which you were unable to meet them are uh, brought to this uh, wonderful time. Right? So they are uh, kind enough to deliver lectures on that one and you are getting so many new ideas also to pursue your career either in the research or in the entrepreneurship or in the academic side. Right? So these kinds of workshops will open, will be an eye-opener for you to just kindle your eyes. Or etc. etc. But it will be an eye opener to just give an idea, initial idea. Right? From that, if you are not interested in it, then you can start doing it. And you can develop yourself in that area. Right? So, like that, so many seminars are arranged by the your esteemed institution and your uh, favorite department. So, you better utilize all those things in a fruitful manner. So, this will be really a useful one for you as far as your career development programs are, career development is concerned, okay. And as far as my part is concerned, I am going to tell you a little about the uh, textile reinforced concrete and how uh, in our, in what areas we can use this one uh, as an applicator. And also some of the researches which are carried out at GCT and somewhere else. So that also I am going to give highlight, okay, next one. So I hope all of you know that civil engineering are giving a beautiful hand for the national asset development and the national infrastructure. Right? Right or wrong? Yes, See, the uh, Taj Mahal or the HCC buildings or the great structures, 40 plus storage buildings or the Lotus Shepherd building, all those things are seen not a single man's ownership or it is not at all constructed by a single hand. Right? I hope all your all of you agree with me. Okay. See, and similarly, uh, see, it is a massive expansion. Okay. So, and this either the Taj Mahal or a big, uh, big uh, high-risk structures are concerned, it is of heavy worth. Right. So, it is not uh, at all constructed based on either the by a few lakhs uh, or few thousands. Right. But it is of worth more than a crore. Right? So like those assets only we have as a, our national uh, uh, one, national important uh, buildings. Right? So those kinds of assets are important to us for our growth and everything. Okay. So see, as if, if you are considering a mobile, then, you have, uh, then and then we are having uh, so many uh, revisions in the model. So once in two years you are just throwing it away and you are getting a new one also. But is that the case possible for our structure? See, if you just think of, can you just 
demolish this building and then will you be able to construct another seminar or like this? Is it possible? Only mom. Only other day, I mean, it's not worth it now. And my hands are not worth it now. See, it is not at all a proportional part. It is huge, literally huge. Right? So, that thousand or lakhs of rupees, we cannot waste as such. So, whenever you concentrate or whenever you put up a project, then you have to think in a wider way and you must choose the right material in the right direction, in the right path. Okay. So, these kinds of different types of structures are available. So, that's why we are in a position to develop ourselves in the construction technology to develop new materials and new techniques. See, see what are these pictures uh, tells you. See, the first one is about the Singapore in the earlier period, the top one. Okay. So, see, that is about the Dubai. So, pointer, this is the pointer. <coughs> see, the center. Everything have got a vertical development and now we 
we are also going up. Both in the Chennai and Mumbai, Mumbai and also Delhi, Calcutta, all those places are having so many high rise structures as apartments. So usually we have only the Benzema project, but the Benzema project is not good in taking tension. So we had embedded the reinforcing steel. So once we embedded the steel, so that is good enough to take up tension. So tension will be carried by steel rods and the compression will be carried over by the concrete. So that's how this RCC was born and using that we have designed all those buildings. But we want to go for a long span structures and the heavy bridges also. So in that case we were in a condition to introduce pre-stress concrete. But still we are not happy with that. We met with so many shrinkage cracks and also heavy structures needs some kind of ductile phenomena also. So we want to introduce fibers in the concrete. So fiber reinforced concrete was one. And then similarly we had the poly, that is polymer concrete also uh, for repair and rehabilitation works. And this lightweight concrete come into existence because of we want to just reduce the load goes to the foundation in certain cases. And similarly we want to avoid the congestion in concrete so we had given enough space for work up this self-compacting concrete. And similarly, we faced so many industrial waste. We want to throw it away. Right? So we cannot simply pollute the land. That's why we thought of in another direction that paved way to create a high volume flash concrete. So we uh, we have we were happy to get this high volume flash concrete. And uh, so many roads were uh, fabricated, were cast using this high volume flash concrete so that the concrete reduction and the CO2 emission is also getting reduced to there. And we are in a position now for high strength concrete. So these high strength concrete were used for the construction of tall structures. See, when, uh, we cannot use either the M15 grade or M50 grade for your uh, buildings up to um, more than uh, 10 storey or 20 storey. We are in a condition to go for above M40 grade or M60 grade, something like that above. So in Singapore and in USA, so many hundred story buildings are all uh, constructed. So all those things are, some of them are made of uh, M100 grade of concrete or M120, 120 grade of concrete, something like that above. Right? So people have thought of uh, forming this uh, high strength concrete and high performance concrete. And this ultra high performance concrete is also used if it is greater than 120 megapascal and also see we are uh, just spoiling our um, sky by using the, by emitting the more carbon dioxide we want to just reduce that part so to reduce carbon dioxide emission means then we have to create another type of concrete called we, we have to just leave the entirely the cement right so one such condition was given by this geopolymers so we were developed with this geopolymer concrete also and finally nowadays we thought about the nanoparticle. So this is how we are having the different types of concrete to suit different environments and to meet the different situations. Right. So we actually see we, are, uh, we have developed so many high strength and high performance concrete uh, but suppose if only the steel is there it will take up the primary tension. But if it is a long span structures, then we have to provide the tertiary reinforcement also, right? Suppose if you are providing a steel fibers or whatever, different types of fibers are available. So if you are embedding another kind of reinforcement, which will act as a, either a secondary reinforcement or as a tertiary reinforcement, then that will pay way for a future area, right? So that will act, uh, that is, suppose if you are using more than one material, then we can call that as a Composite. So it can be defined as a combination of a reinforcement material and a matrix. So the properties of a composite is always a superior one than when you consider that as an individual. And this will mainly act as a load bearing component. And because that extra members, that composites will be responsible for taking up more strength and also the more stiffness because it will elongate the ductile phenomena. So as if it is taking more ductility means automatically this will lead for more stiffness. And these kinds of secondary reinforcements are normally used to improve the shear capacity and reduce the likelihood of sudden failures. 
and uh, see again coming over to the right types of reinforcement and matrix. See there are different kinds of forms are available uh, in addition to these steel bars. So either it may be in the form of fibers or maybe in the form of particles or maybe in the form of plates. So the matrix on the other hand keeps the reinforcement in a given orientation and it protects it from chemical and physical damage. And also it is responsible for the homogeneous distribution of loads also. So you can see this kind of grid reinforcement. See that may be either made up of steel or GFRP or CFRP or different types of materials are available today. And this will be embedded in the matrix, matrix like this. So what is the textile reinforced country? So now if you are replacing the steel bars by means of textile gauge, textile fabric, then you can call it as a textile reinforced country. Right? So instead of a metal gauge, what you are seeing in the uh, construction site, so that will be removed and you are uh, able to just replace it by means of a GFRP gauge or a AFRP gauge, aramid gauge or polypropylene or etc. Et so many types of materials, both in the natural and also in the artificial manner. Gauge systems are available. So that is available as if in the forms of mat fibers or continuous grid systems or like uh, sheets also it is available. So this kind of system will have a, will give you a high performance. So this kind of high performance textile reinforcement may be made up of continuous multi-filament yarns also. Right? See these are some of the elements, uh, pictures here shown you. So the materials may be either it may be made of a glass or polypropylene or polyamides and it may be either a plane of system or a 3D system. Right? Normally if the thickness is very very less then we can call it as a plane or weak side. Right? Suppose if the thickness is of considerable one right? then it will take up more load so that uh, component we call it as a 3D. Okay. So this is a carbon uh, grids and this one is the glass and this is made up of bazaar fiber and this is polyphenylene and the last one is an example for steel. And similarly the uh, things regarding the fiber reinforcements are given. These are the lines. And the materials normally we use for is uh, like the carbon or ceramic glass or ultra fine molecular weight uh, polyethylene and ceramic. And this is again another type of uh, uh, type of woven matrix or the uh, knitted type etc. And these are some of the composite systems, right? See the first one is nothing but a steel beam which is supporting a profile deck slab, right? So that is one type of composite slab. Right? This one is known as a steel formed composite slab, right? And here this is a profile sheet, so that will take give you a tension. Right? So this system will take up tension. Instead of steel bars, this is taking tension. And it will act as a permanent formal bar also. So that is a steel in place form we get called. Right? And this entire system is supported by this ID. And over this provided deck sheet, concrete may be of uh, thickness 40 mm to 60 mm, it will be poured in here. Right? So the concrete over this one will take up the, will give you the compression, whereas this steel sheet with this shear connector will provide you a attention. And another system is profile steel plater system for which steel dresses are embedded here to take the tension. And the next one is the third type is and the fourth one is having the tubular system. Like that so many varieties are available. And what are the comparison between this TRC and this RCC system? that is presented here. So as far as this uh, RCC is concerned, so you know about the steel rods, right? Because steel rod is a highly rigid one and the main thing is it may be susceptible to corrosion also. And also the density is very heavy, so automatically weight goes to the foundation will be much more, right? So it is not at all a fast economical one. But in the same way, if you just consider all these factors relevantly to this uh, textile reinforcements, then all the things will be nullified here. This is very, very lesser in weight, cost effective, and also unskilled, even unskilled labors could use this one. Right? So, like that, we are having so many applications. And many advantages are uh, goes like this because this is uh, having a high strength to weight ratio. See, it is like a filament thing, right? So, the weight will be very, very lesser, but 
it will give you a large deformation. It will take large deformation. Right? So the strength will be heavy, heavy, very heavy. It will take more load. And also it is having the ability to be manufactured in complex shapes. See, if you consider the steel rod, it cannot be bent to a shape of yes and all. Right? Suppose if you take a 25 mm or 32 mm rod, uh, do you think that it is possible to bend the steel rod into a shape of a yes chap? If you want to fabricate a yes shaped chap, is that possible? Mudima. It is tough. Right? But with the help of this GFRP sheet reinforcements or filaments or fibers, it would be possible. And similarly, if there is an ability to tailor the mechanical properties according to the specific needs. And it is non-corrosive, whereas steel is a corrosion one, and low thermal conductivity and outstanding fatigue performance. So these are the benefits we have out of this textile industry. And initially it is originated from German Institute and then it is patented in 1982. And actually this was first uh, put into the public attraction by introducing this one into a, uh, by fabricating a boat. Two types of boats, one is uh, made of glass fibers and another one is by carbon fibers were made and it was put into the uh, public attraction. And these are the different types of applications. We are able to get publication, uh, application in automotive industry, auto, uh, automobiles, uh, marine industry, constructions, uh, aircraft, uh, sports, and even in the biomedical also. So, uh, regarding the civil engineering applications, people are using this one for the bridges. See, this is an example bridge in the Germany, but now, mostly as far as Indian scenario is concerned, we are utilizing this for the repair and the rehabilitation of structures. That you are able to see that work. See, this is the packet application. So here, this is applied. And the, the next one is concerned. See, this is a shell structure. See here, how much thin structure it is. You are able to see now. So a thin shell element will be there. Textile sheet will be there. And around that, the concrete will be there. <coughs> so very, very lesser one. So and it is a mobile structure also. So these are the different kinds of uh, applications in the uh, construction industry, outer factors, partition walls and jolly work and all for the water tanks, for all those purposes we can use. And uh, this is useful in the rehabilitation also. See suppose if I any type of slab here, if it is corroded, if the steel rods are exposed and if it is, a, uh, if there is corrosion, what you can do is you can just chip it off and apply a mortar which can be act as a bond to the old concrete surface. Because there is an, uh, some kind of adhesives are available to stick with the old concrete surface with the new concrete surface. So that you have to push it over and then you just throw the cement mortar also. And in the outer side you can stick your wrapping, CFRP wrapping sheet or AFRP wrapping sheet. So that together will take up the more load. So this is how some of the rehabilitation works are possible today. See, you are seeing that one, right? So here the column is stamped here and there is here another example. Yes, the automotive industry finds its uh, maximum obligation. See, actually what is our aim normally? See, we want to reduce the fuel consumption, right? Mainly one is the financial part and another one is will be the one is economical and another one in the world, what is the problem? Means CO2 emission. Right? Pollution is the way to go. And the pollution is the way to go. Carbon monoxide emission is the way to go. Right? So that we want to reduce. So if you want to reduce that one, then we have to think of other kinds of materials. So that is driven by this fantastic element of composites. So around 40 to 60 percentage of fuel consumption could be saved from this. So this is the power bodies, the part of power bodies would be manufactured out of this one, aircraft industry, everything. And another wonderful application is biomedical industry. So for the, see, the natural and synthetic polymer based textile materials are found wide application here. So because of mainly the flexibility, strength, thermal stability and the biostability. And another uh, maximum advantage is all due to 
because it is not at all giving any non-toxicity, right? There won't be any toxicity. So it is non-toxic in nature and also it will not give you any infection inside your body, right? And it is renewable and it possesses excellent properties. See, that's why for knee replacement and hip replacement or for dental implants or for bridging, right? So for all these uh, biomedical applications, people are, uh, doctors are utilizing this material. So this is having a wider application in the biomedical field. So these are the, some of the examples. And similarly in the sports field, right? So we are having so many applications here in the golf ground and also in the tennis rackets. So here that will be worn down by this different filaments. And also the poles, uh, this uh, carbon fiber composites are used for the protection of poles also, which are used in the pole body. And because the coal, uh, coal may be of lighter weight, but it, it will be flexible enough and also it will be very stiff if you are using this kind of uh, textile elements. So the, that will be using mainly the glass fibers or the CFRP fibers with the epoxy. And as far as this uh, sports applications are concerned, the people are using this one in the, this in the carbon fiber composites are used in the bicycle frames also, you might have seen and also in the front forks and in the seat posts because all these things are using this one because of its slight weight along with the more stiffness and we are having the nylon wheels and the tennis racket handles so all these things are under applications and similarly the aerospace industry so the aircraft and mine structures are utilizing this one and they also want to reduce the fuel consumption so instead of aluminium alloys then they have replaced that one with the help of the composites. So these are the jet planes which have found replacement in aircraft industry. Yes. So we have seen a list of applications, right? So based on those applications, here people have derived these kinds of advantages because the specimens are high, giving more strength to page ratio and there is a high critic strength and no catastrophic failure will be there and the low double expansion and resistance to chemical and environmental factors are more and the toughness is also more and damage tolerance is more structural integrity and manageability of the reinforcing material is more and suitability for the net shape manufacturing is more and there is a lot of fire resistance and non-toxic material and it has no water also and it can be used in wet surfaces also easy so these are the applications we have. So due to that one, people are using this. Uh, but still we have some uh, disadvantages, right? So wherever you are having advantages, there will be certain disadvantages also. Because the main thing is a cost is more, right? And another one is the good properties in one direction, but it will be poor in the another direction. But still we are able to use that in a particular way. Yes. So, until that, you have seen so many applications and in which industry is using in which area. So, that at all I, I have just mentioned you. And now, what we are going to see here is nothing but the mechanical property. And then based on this property, people have started using this in the research field also. Right? So, with that, some two or three examples I have So, as far as the mechanical properties are concerned, See, you have all uh, belong to either third years or final years. So you might have done a uh, SM lab in the in your second years, right? So there you might have done the tension test on steel rods and with the stress strain carbon concrete, right? So your stress strain carbon concrete will be like this. Am I right or wrong? So it will take up more load, up to one strain it will go, then it will start down, right? Because of its brittle nature, it will start to crash, right? So here, up to this part alone, it is having the, it is taking out the load, right? But for all kinds of structural elements, we are not happy with that part. We want to go like this, right? Because we need some kind of deformation, right? Because suppose if it is an earthquake region, it should give you some warning before collapse. So, Suppose it will be the time, it will be the time. So that's why people are interested 
in the phenomenon of ductility. Right? So we would like to have more ductile specimens and this is the, because of this reason alone. Okay. So this is not at all desirable. That's why people are engaged in this kind of steel rods into place. So together it took more work. Right? But still this is also not at all desirable. We want to have some kind of composite element there. Right? We want to introduce composite element because yeah, we need to take up, we need to give you more load at the same time, more deformation also. Right? So suppose if you are introducing fibers in one place, then it will take up, it will not retain here like this, but it will go up to this place. So it will give you a more load, right? And at the same time, this is giving you a more deformation also. Right? So your current will be like this now. So this will give you one slope here and the other slope here. Right. So two slopes will be there. So this kind of environment is created in the textile that it was composite element. Right? So this is desirable as far as the composite members are concerned and in many applications this will be uh, needed. So this kind of test were done by uh, so many researchers. I a single point coding for shear test and two point coding for bending test to see this kind of arrangements. So uh, many applications tell you that, see the only if the reinforcing steel alone is tested like this and AR glass with the steroid putride and AR glass with the epoxy uh, resins, carbon plus uh, steroid putride and the carbon plus epoxy resin. Right. So if you are having a systems like this put together, then you may be having things like this. So out of all those things, we are having more load and more deformation in this area. So these are the ways and means of how uh, it is marketable. So the comparison between the materials of uh, textile reinforcement, steel fiber and polypropylene is given based on the density, thickness, weight and uh, as how it is a benchmarking material. And as far as the applications are concerned, many of you know about this um, application, right? See, in many, see, we are constructing this building, right? So, are you, do you think that this building is simply placed over this road? Is the place simply constructed over the road? Anybody in town, okay, like, every part of it. Building difficulty in town, what will be the bottom most element? Foundation. Foundation. Uh, is it possible to have your foundation over the uh, road itself or where your land is available? In that point itself, do you construct your, uh, do you start constructing your building with the foundation on the topmost point? And uh, what you will do? So first part is the building construction. Excavation but sitting in there. So why you are excavating? Yes, very good. So hard rock barano, yeah hard rock barano. Then why you are not constructing over the that loose soil itself? Differential settlement. Differential settlement barano. Building is like tracks for our nature. In a foundation, why that kind of seat are you building? So that is the reason. So we want to have a pakka foundation that should be seated over pakka soil also. But in many places, we are having a bust soil. Uh, like uh, clay soils or uh, black cotton soil or uh, some of them are maybe a uh, loosely packed ones, right? Some may not be having uh, enough safe value capacity. So in those cases, we have to stiffen the soil. Like anyway, see, so many places may be having black cotton soils. So do you think that you can just simply leave the ground and uh, can you go to the next ground and to construct your place, construct your building? Yeah. 
all the house owners will not be, it is not possible to be a civil engineer. So you will not think from the technical point of view. Namma asa koi foundation ke adho sa elapana noni ella rali yos kamadi yaad. If you are a civil engineer, you may think, suppose if it is a backward and soil ground, then we may just leave and go for a choosing another side. Something like that you may choose, right? But that may not be possible. Suppose if you like the ground, uh, if it is very near to your bus stand or airport or other amenities, right? Suppose if it is thirsty, you may not be uh, have a right to leave that site also. But if you have bought such a site, then what you will do? You have to start constructing the building. So foundation design is not particularly there. But initially you will do a soil test, right? So soil test banana, but the kilo point there. Here, some buildings may be having a basement floor also. But that is on another angle rock there. So, if we are talking about if we are going to have a building or a floor, fear it, put it under a floor. We can construct a basement floor structure. Now, so many you can think of, right? But instead, people in some places what may do is they will stiffen the soil. So, the some kind of soil reinforcement may be there, or you can improve the ground nature by giving ground improvement. Okay, so one of such thing is nothing but this kind of reinforcements, right? So for which we may be having either a unidirectional grid or a two-directional grid or a triaxial geogrids. So these kinds of systems are available using which you can uh, give more strength to your soil. So this will act as a soil reinforcement to improve the stiffness, bearing capacity and to reduce the settlement. And the material of, uh, see this may be either type of, uh, the previous I have shown you one thing now. So like this also you may be having the grid system or it may be like a st uh, strip source. The strip reinforcement may be made up of one, a carbonized steel or aluminum or magnesium alloy or uh, some kind of stainless steel may be there. And similarly you may be having Bamboo strips, polymer strips, or maybe made of GFRP or CFRP also. And similarly, instead of that grid or instead of that strip, you may be having a sheet reinforcement also. Right? That is another one. And these are different types of strips you have. And the slab panels. See, these are the examples of the slab panels. So what you are seeing here is matrix and then a resonant layer. Or uh, any grid system, and similarly the other ones. And this is how you can test the panel. And also, see, this is again another example where you are able to see so many tires. Because so many automobile vehicles are there, right? So you cannot use the same way where you got ones, right? So they find my so that kind of system you cannot uh, take to the, to the entire life of your vehicle itself. So once in some period, either three years or five years, you have to throw it away, right? So those tires makes the ground polluted. So nowadays, this rubber particles made it as a fine aggregate and coarse aggregate and they are replacing it in the concrete also. And these are the different mixed proportions. I make it fast as the time is fast approaching. And so this is the impact test panel. So this kind of slabs made up of this uh, rubberized component with the rubber filaments are uh, put here and they are given tested, drop panel test. And based on that, the energy absorption was found. And so due to that rubber fibers, it is showing this much amount of deflection. And similarly, uh, the ductility is also good for this. And in addition to the low impact test, people have, uh, see these tests were carried out at the GCT and we have done the bending test also and this is applied with the two point bending. And this is how the trilinear curve we are able to do. So say one slope and another one deformation, then we are having another slope also. Regarding the concrete composite uh, columns, and here we are having the composite column which is having the steel rod as reinforcement, and this is the angle, steel angles are having the width steel.
syrups and fizzes again as the lacies. Right? So here this is the aggregate is the fly ash aggregate with the fibers are made right here and using that the column composite area. See this is made up of a puzzle fiber. So these are the different elements we are using for the testing and uh, with the regular complementary ingredients we have added puzzle fiber also in Jaipur and so that this has exhibited good amount of protein. So this is how the testing was done. So different kinds of uh, ratios were applied. This is LN indicates you the lightweight sintered aggregates of uh, the fiber, uh, puzzle fiber percentage is 0.25 and some may be tested for uh, hemiaxin and some for cyclin. So this is the test setup here and some of the lateral linear and the lateral strains were measured in this system. And as these are all the cyclic loading, so we have incremented the loading and made it down to the zero and having the increase to the loading and then we have put a draw it to down zero. So like that the repeated loading was applied due to just to create the expert nature. Right? So we have got these kinds of graph. And so this basal fiber are able to produce a good amount of ductility and energy absorption. And these are the different failure modes that we are showing here. And these experimental results were compared with the final element results also, just to compare and to get the values. And the similar types of graphs. So up to the yield load, it shows it goes on increasing. Then it showed a good amount of ductility here. So that and we are able to get a good amount of data base. So the same we see the blue colored one is an ANSYS final element results whereas the red colored one are from the experimental one. So both of them are similar in nature. So these are the different loads and so the load axial reflection and the lateral reflections are presented here. So from this what we are able to understand is the black ended the composite column, the columns have produced the more, more load and also it showed up more ductility and energy absorption capacity is also more when you compare with the control systems. That is conventional. So as a conclusion, the textile reinforcement is having a, a good scope here and we, uh, we could be able to apply it over the construction field and the biomedical field, the aerospace industry, marine um, field everywhere. And we are having this textile materials in the form of both in the form of fibers as well as a 2D operating fabric forms also we are having. So the, the fabric form are having, see uh, we could be able to give it as a wrap so that in the repair and rehabilitation work also it is having a good uh, development. So with this I am completing my lecture and if you are having any doubts you can ask me. Any doubts? So some of you can take up this work in the experimental work in your final seven semester uh, research uh, is for the thesis work you are having now. So for that you can take up project one and project two you are having. So for that you can take up. So many little works also you are able to do with that one. Different types of composite elements are there and anyone any data, simpler thing with the your because you are having a PG uh, course or program also here, right? So along with them you can work and you can show some of the results. That will be useful to your future also. If there is any no doubts then I shall buy you this session. Thank you. Thank you for your session hearing. And thanks for the opportunity. I hardly invite Dr. M. Maria Pritzer to honor the chief guest with a momento.